As Chinese martial arts moved from the ancient battlefield to the folk arena, they did not wither away, but gave rise to numerous styles of martial arts with different forms and complex skills. However, their actual combat ability has been repeatedly questioned. What transformations have they gone through over time? Shanghai University of Sport is one of China's authoritative martial arts teaching and research institutions. <laughs> Professor Chu Pi Xiong is a renowned martial arts scholar. He leads the crew directly into a training class on various martial arts sequences. The students include many national and even world martial arts champions, but the teaching content is not confrontational. Wushutaluna 建议套路的建议套路的建议套路的建议套路的建议套路的建议套路的建议套路的建议套路的建议套路的建议套路的建议套路的建议套路的建议套路的建议套路的建议套路的建议套路的建议套路的建议套路的建议套路的建议套路的
不同的地域表现了不同的犬种，大致的可以分为以长江为界，以南以北，南犬北腿。South fist, north leg, east spear, and west staff. The saying goes. The map inspires the crew's further investigation of the folk martial arts. Professor Chu says that in the National Survey of Martial Arts conducted in the 1980s, there were clear criteria established for the evaluation of traditional schools of martial arts. They must be unique, properly inherited, and self-contained, with clear theories of their own. At the same time, he also stresses that the offensive and defensive values of martial arts are essential. To begin with, the crew go in search of South Fist. This is not a specific school of martial arts, but the collective name for folk schools south of the Yangtze River. Typical of them is Wu Zhu Jin, meaning five ancestor boxing, established in Quanzhou in the late 19th century. The crew are recommended to seek out a Wu Zhu Chen practitioner called Zhang Xiao Feng. A meeting is arranged at the Confucius Temple in the old town of Quanzhou. Zhang runs a martial arts school that is well known in the area. He's known locally as the director. Zhang was 12 when he started learning Wu Zhu Chuan from Su Zai Fu, a famous local master of Wu Zhu Chuan. In adult life, he found work as a civil servant and then in shipping, but he couldn't let go of martial arts, so he opened his own school. Zhang Xiao Feng says that only this traditional way of teaching and learning can properly shape the spiritual outlook of the children. After seeing the martial arts training at the Confucius Temple, Zhang Xiao Feng takes the crew to the nearby temple of Guan Yu, the god of war in China. Jin Zhou people come here to ask the god to grant their wishes. Zhang's wish is for his son to be admitted to the martial arts and ethnic traditional sports program at Jimei University. Zhang Wenqiao has been learning and practicing martial arts with his father since he was a toddler. He never imagined that he'd fail the martial arts entry exam two years in succession. It has become a major worry for both the father and son. This is our Although Wu Zhu Quan was only formulated just over 100 years ago, many of its skills evolved from ancient military martial arts. This set of staff skills was originally created by Yu Da Yu, a famous general and son of Jin Zhou. This shield made of cane is a weapon unique to Fujian province. Ming Dynasty general Qi Ji Guang devised a combination of cane shield with other weapons, which played a key role in the war against Japanese pirates. His all the schools may have originated from the same source, but for Zhang Wen Zhao, there is only one thing to do now. He must practice hard at the required moves to get into the university. These required exam moves are a must for students hoping to enter the University Department of Martial Arts. 
They aim for high difficulty, high ornamental value, and innovation, a key difference from folk martial arts training. Although Zhang Wen Chao is under huge pressure in preparing for his third attempt at the exam, his father won't let him neglect his practice of Wu Zhu Quan. To meet the selection standards for martial arts courses in colleges and universities, popular martial artists have to lean towards high difficulty, high ornamental value, and novelty. It's a reality that the father and son have to accept. The date of the next exam looms closer. Although changes in training standards between folk styles and professional colleges have caused them many problems, Zhang Xiaofeng is adamant that the combative nature of martial arts should not be changed. Like the South Fist, the North Leg is also a coverall name for the schools of martial arts from north of the Yangtze River. The focus is on kicking skills with extended postures. Shenyang was once the home of martial artist Yu Boqian. His student, Bai Guodong, is an inheritor of the Chuojiao Fanzi Chen, meaning poking foot and rotating fist. Bai is a hard man to track down, but the crew have been told that he practices at Shenyang's Zhongshan Park every morning. When he is finally tracked down in one corner of the park, however, he is reluctant to talk. Bai Guodong is suspicious because someone once filmed him in the park and then sold the video commercially using Bai's name without permission nor any offer of remuneration. Eventually, his mind is put at rest, and he begins to open up a bit. Bai Guodong is 83 now. He remembers his master, Yu Bo Jin. Over 60 years ago, he saw his master practicing alone in this park, and so began his martial arts adventure. Yu Bo Qian was born in the early 20th century, during the late Qing Dynasty. He was proficient in Chuojiao Fanzi Chen, but he knew much more than fighting. He went to college, served in the army, and wasn't afraid to give the city's arrogant Japanese overlords a piece of his mind. 
Martial arts scholar Ma Mingda said Yu Bo Qian was one of the true martial artists whose faith never wavered at a time when stylish but not useful moves became all the fashion. Bai Guo Dong stopped practicing martial arts sequences a long time ago, but he has an excellent student in Liu Yang who can demonstrate them. The wave pattern is a sequence Yu Bo Qian created after a lifetime of thinking and learning. <laughs> Bai Guodong originally wanted to teach his students a set of Yu Bo Qian's blade fighting skills. This 所以就是说必须两个人配合的，原因就在这儿。对，没有人的话，您有些东西是你练不了。嗯，现在就基本失传了吧？失传了。嗯，有苦没有没有道了。It's been forty years since Master Yu Bo Qian passed away. Many skills can be lost when a person dies. There is a saying: when a man dies, an art is lost. 这是于老师追悼会的时候。嗯，对。Bai Guodong has been a worker all his life, and this has been his home for decades. Apart from going to the park to exercise, most of the time he stays at home and listens to stories on the radio. 武士啥？精神和力，胆量，一种追求。现在不是追求，现在就是锻炼。俺这邻居都不知道我练什么，厂子都不知道。树欲静而风不止。By Good Dong is in a hurry to finish filming because he is worried that the neighbors would notice if the crew stay longer. The crew depart reluctantly feeling that there is much more left to be discovered from this hidden master. Before leaving Shenyang, the crew decide to pay their respects to Master Yu Bo Qian by visiting his grave. They rely on the rough directions provided by Bai Guo Dong. Hey, hello. We're looking for a tree called Yu Bo Qian. Do you have a tree? You should have a tree. 八十年代初这儿埋过一个叫于伯谦的武术家，您听说过吗？不知道，不知道。因为这边闪的庙多，你要你要不在园区里，我们没法查。这个于伯谦墓可太胖了了，我安排个人叫他帮你找一下。哎
Mei Jiaxin takes the crew to meet a group of Peking opera enthusiasts. Mei Jiaxin, a retiree from a state-owned enterprise, spends his days singing opera, practicing martial arts, and taking care of his granddaughter. He has been obsessed with martial arts since childhood, having learned Xin Yi Liu Hu Chen from renowned master Liu Feng Ming. This school, which was formed in the mid-17th century, grew from a basis of spear skills. Ancient military spear skills were used in highly drilled group combat. When they became part of folk culture, the restrictions on the possession and use of weapons saw them gradually turn into a set of barehanded combat skills. The abandonment of weapons made the skills less lethal, but combat ability was still important. Practicing martial arts will be in vain without strengthening basic skills. The folk martial artists have always striven for combat effectiveness, which is even reflected in their dress. Master Song Guo Bin was a renowned martial artist in the era of the Republic of China. He used to train the garrisons at Beng Bu in martial arts and later taught his skills to the workers at the ports along the Huai He River. The changing times, social environments, and the paths of inheritance have all led to a decline in the fighting efficacy of Chinese martial arts. Mei Jia Xin's student, Liu Jia Cheng, and Mei's son, Mei Runzhi, run a martial arts school. Mei Runzhi has practiced martial arts with his father since he was a child, but he doesn't earn his living through martial arts. Liu Jia Cheng used to fight in professional Sun Da competitions. These days, he's a regular salaryman. At weekends, they do fight training to enhance their combat abilities. This is not a real fight, but another sequence, a classic training method in traditional martial arts. Both parties attacking and defending simultaneously is a typical characteristic of Chinese martial arts. Mei Jia Xin is totally dedicated to the martial arts. He is happy because he can do what he likes. But in dealing with his son, he is curiously restrained and almost never lets his son practice exerting force. This is because Mei Rin Zhe has suffered from ankylosing spondylitis since he was 25. He is taking double doses of painkillers for the film shoot. Before his affliction struck, he had a different life plan.
Das so, man nennt ja das ja nicht. Ich 通过农历应该讲The spear skills used to kill on the battlefield, but in an unlikely twist gave birth to barehanded folk martial arts. The evolution of ancient skills and the perseverance of a modern martial artist perfectly show the ever-changing external forms of martial arts and the never-changing essence of combat skills. Next, the crew head to northwest China, where staff skills are popular. Zhao Xiao Chang's family are guardians of the Hei Hu staff and are well known in the city of Tian Shui in Gansu province. But the videos the crew have seen show seemingly slow and soft moves, quite different from the fierce and powerful skills they have anticipated. The charm of Tian Shui goes back to the legends of Fu Shi and Nu Wa, the deities found in Chinese mythology, as well as expressive and easygoing character of the people of China's Northwest. Like the glasses on these old men's noses, practicing martial arts is a common sight. The crew go in search of the Hei Hu, or Black Tiger Staff. But the videos showed a long staff. Is that the real Hei Hu staff? The crew go to look for Zhao Xiao Chang, in a village in Tian Shui. This the crew want to see more of these staff skills. The staff skills Zhao Xiao Chang demonstrates are not much different from what was seen in the video. What really arouses the crew's interest is the stabbing staff skill. Zhao Xiao Chang starts to get a little distracted. He wants to get back to work. He has a couple of acres of cherry trees in the mountains, and he has to water them by hand. Neither of Zhao's two sons practice martial arts. He wants to raise the hundreds of thousands of yuan needed for his son's marriages as soon as possible. His work, planting cherries and corn and hauling bricks, 
keeps him tied to the mountains to achieve his goal. Ni 拉格拉嘎啥去,操在家里,不拉出来。The <coughs> day's work is finished, and dinner is being readied. It's time for Zhao Xiao Chang to relax. <coughs> Zhao Xiao Chang's most loyal fan is his dog, Hei Hu. A bowl of authentic Jiang Shui noodles is his regular evening meal. After his meal, Zhao Xiao Chang's real nightlife begins. The crew are in luck. Zhao Xiao Chang's big brother, who has practiced martial arts with him since they were both kids, comes home. After repeated requests, they agree to demonstrate the Hei Hu staff dual practice. Like the spear skills hidden in the staff, Zhao Xiao Chang, Ho in hand, keeps his deep knowledge of the martial arts he has mastered as a hidden life treasure. The changing social environment has left traditional martial arts without their original purpose, no longer used for self-protection or for earning a livelihood. Those folk martial arts, like the Hei Hu staff, are just the redundant skill of a mountain farmer. Apart from the long staff, Northwest China is also known for a distinctive type of short staff, called the whip staff. The crew go to the capital of Shanxi province, Xi'an, where a whip staff member is known to live. He arranges to meet the crew in an area suffused with the smell of delicious food. Bai Shuren is a native of Xi'an. He has been obsessed with martial arts since childhood. He has studied under many famous martial artists in northwest China. When he was young, his reputation grew to the extent that he was simply known as Young Bai. Over the decades, the vicissitudes of life saw him disappear from Shi An's martial arts community for some time. A few years ago, he returned as Old Bai and began teaching whipstaff in the park. 
，他是都做生意的。这是这我们认识了，这卖面的，这是卖面的啊，那是卖泡馍的，那个是卖甜食、卖元宵的。卖面的，卖元宵的，卖元宵的，元宵。哦，这就是一个餐饮业的武术队啊！天回飞两把刀，一把宰牛羊，一把卖切糕，都是卖饭的。The people of Xi'an took to the whip staff because of its multiple uses throughout history. Its length at around one and a quarter meters allows it to be used as a walking stick for hiking or to help carry heavy goods. And most importantly, it's a handy weapon against beasts and bandits. The whip staff focuses on continuous striking. The seemingly over-elaborate moves are in fact highly effective in offensive or defensive. These days, the whip staff has become a popular way of exercise for the people in the Northwest because of its complex skills. This is three steps. Maybe just this one. This will go directly. Variation and speed are two major elements of the whip staff skills. These would seem to be a bit challenging for a man in his 70s, like Bai Shuren. Fortunately, his students have largely mastered the whip staff in recent years, so he only needs to advise from time to time. The great thing is that they have fun together and strengthen their bodies. Of course, being able to pass on his skills in such a pleasant environment. Makes Bai Shu Ren a lifelong devotee of martial arts, both relieved and delighted. After putting their weapons away, these hard-working merchants go back serving their customers. The whip staff seems to bring a special joy to their lives. Inspired by them, the episode director asks Bai Shu Ren for a private lesson. The crew follow Bai to his home, where he leads them to the rooftop. 是不是也是不想让周围人看？对对对，是。In the lively and crowded neighborhood, this is the only peaceful place that belongs to him alone. <音>对，很好。他就是在里头藏着连续击打，因为他本身是个细细杆、细木头，一旦有机会不能放弃。就是说，咱俩动手的时候，你一个刀到这儿了，我不管你。我完成我的动作，比如说你刀在这儿了，我东西用在这儿来了，我躲你，说不定我就找上了；我不躲你，咱俩谁得定力好，谁的意志坚定，谁就赢了。It becomes clear that what Bai Shuren hides on his rooftop is his relentless pursuit of the true essence of martial arts. Its fighting applications. Come on, old man, go to the mall, mall. We are a Chinese martial art artist. I think the skill of defending and defending is the best. You can do it. 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 对不对？你可以给他配上武术的外衣，但是你要认为这个就是中国的国术啊，给你自欺欺人呐、啊！你就一直活在那种虚无缥缈中，中国武术就是翻跟头。She and catering martial artists keep their thin whip staffs hidden in the corner of their stores. At midnight, the owners of the sticky rice ball stall and the palmo shop are free again to enjoy their leisure time. So long, I learned that. The crew's experience in Xi'an demonstrates the great vitality of Chinese folk martial arts. In our time, martial arts have moved from being professional skills for warriors to a pastime for the ordinary people. The crew return to Beijing to meet a special guest. Robert Baudouin and his team are from a folk martial arts organization that adheres to the traditional Eastern concepts, the World Tang Su Du Association. By legend, Tang Su Du originated in China during the Tang Dynasty and became popular across East Asia. 
It was introduced to the United States from Korea in the 1960s. In 1984, when China was in the midst of a martial arts revival, Robert was invited to visit China with the World Tang Su Du Association. His return to China after more than three decades is entirely due to an unexpected discovery made by the crew during their research. In 2018, the crew met Liu Jin Zhu, the inheritor of a local school of martial arts in Lanzhou, Ba Men Chuen, meaning Eight Gate Fist. He was 83 at the time, but his moves were incredibly agile and fast. <laughs> Liu Jin Zhu was born in the countryside and can't read. When he was young, he won a medal at the Second National Games of China, thanks to his excellent skill in martial arts. He later became a martial arts coach. During the decades, he saved a lot of martial arts materials, and these well-preserved business cards caught the crew's attention. Liu remembers attending the 1984 Martial Arts Exchange in Lanzhou with members of the World Tang Su Du Association. He was proud that his ancestral martial arts were being recognized by their foreign counterparts, and he kept all their calling cards. The crew immediately started to make contact, hoping to invite the owners of the cards to visit China again. In doing so, they want to get an insight into the development of traditional Chinese martial arts abroad. On the evening before meeting with Liu Jin Zhu, Robert shows the crew a documentary about the 1984 trip. To reacquaint Robert with Liu Jin Su, the crew show him video footage taken during pre-production in 2018. Yeah. He saved him. He carried out the business card from his wallet. I was surprised. So young. Oh my goodness. Oh my goodness. Oh my goodness. <laughs> Liu Jin Su has lost a lot of weight since the crew last saw him. His family say he was in hospital until very recently and could barely get out of bed. Though not in good health, Liu Jin Su insists on taking the crew to the Liu family ancestral temple. The two veteran martial artists only have the language of their craft in common as they continue their dialogue from all those decades ago. Robert is very interested in Leo's spear skills in the video, and Leo immediately understands what he means. Although the scene looks pleasant enough, it is quickly stopped by disgruntled Liu Jin Su. It seems to roll back to 1984 when they met for the first time. Although so much time has passed, their pursuit of the essence of martial arts through its combat skills has been constant. Some martial arts in our world has, has changed and lost some of the traditional aspect of control, respect. 
It was like Mr. Leo said, it's not genuine. And uh, so they learned the wrong thing. But now there's a revolution for good health. Normal student wants to learn uh, self-defense, physical fitness. Let's not fight. Competition isn't for everybody. So performance gives a person a chance to express themselves freely. We've done some surveys. 98% of the population of the world, they don't do martial arts. Why did we learn martial art? Not to win first place in trophies. That's not important. To help you with your integrity, concentration, perseverance, self-control, humility, and dominable spirit. Today, professional martial arts athletes pursue competition and combat, while folk martial arts enthusiasts are most interested in exercise and performance. The pursuit of different values has led to a diversified development of martial arts. Maybe this is inevitable as times change. Maybe mutual respect and tolerance is how martial arts culture should develop. There's no one best martial art. We have to be open to other styles. Robert and Leo Jin Su's brief reunion makes the crew realize that although martial arts around the world are diversifying, retaining the essential of combat skills is still crucial for their development. This is a world of martial arts that has been guarded by countless people to this day. Today's contemporary competitive martial arts and traditional martial arts have parted ways. Many schools of martial arts have disappeared with the death of their inheritors. The core skills of martial arts have changed and even been lost. People in China and across the world now mostly see martial arts as a way of improving their physical fitness. It seems that the degradation of the combat ability of Chinese martial arts is inevitable as time passes. But it remains that the pursuit of combat skills is always the mission of true martial artists. This is evidenced in every martial artist that the crew visited. Chinese martial arts have never stopped changing. It is the love of ordinary people that has been the guarding and the keeping of the real soul of martial arts.